Fun dog. So, here's the deal. These past few months, we've had an outpour of positive reception from you guys around what we're creating. And we're okay, um... Full disclosure, I didn't know about this until I saw Asmongold's video of him uh, reacting to this. So I this is this is not my first time seeing this, but I'm gonna try and give you my honest reaction to what we're gonna see here on screen. But I had never heard of this before until Asmongold reacted to it. We really want to get that game out to you sooner. That's why we're diving right into early access on September okay. 24th, 2024. And a heartfelt thank you to everyone who participated in the beta. The team has been rocking around the clock to incorporate a ton of the feedback you guys gave us. And we can't wait to share the progress. <laughs> now, I don't believe anyone should have to pay more than 50 USD for a game. And if you... Thank you. If you want to support the team above and beyond the initial price point, that is awesome. And we really appreciate it. There will be a special edition with the game's soundtrack and Jason's awesome tunes. But that should be your choice based on how much you guys dig the game. So the Forever Winter is going to be $27 at early access. Definitely there will getting be this. zero pay to win solutions. You will earn your gear via skill or luck, and you will not be able to buy your way into Nirvana. You Thank you! That is all we have ever wanted. AAA Studios, that's all we have ever wanted. We just want respect. But all we're getting from you is hatred. You 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 hate gamers. I mean, you, you let your people go out on social media and just hate on gamers. The people who buy your games. And that's why you're failing. That's why you're going away and developers like these guys are taking your place. That's why that's happening. That's why you're losing. That's why your games are failing. And Concord is the latest failure. So I stand by what I said in my last video, that there is a video game crash happening. I call it a crash, but it's actually more a paradigm shift. It is where the old guard, these old companies that are set in their ways will never change these old AAA studios that will no longer innovate because they are too you're just too set in their ways they will not innovate they will not experiment they stay with what they think is safe or they will push the that DEI bullshit until until they just basically don't have any more money anymore to do it they just keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and doubling down on it and blaming the gamers every time it fails and so they are falling away and being replaced by gamer game studios like these guys so i stand by what i said the crash is happening now and we are seeing the shift the paradigm shift away from AAA Studios leading the industry to guys like these guys leading the industry. EA, Activision, Ubisoft, they are not the gaming industry. If they disappeared, yes, if they disappeared today, the gaming industry would still chug along just fine without them. Nothing would change. Gaming will not end if EA, Ubisoft, and... Activision and even Sony PlayStation were to vanish off the face of the earth. It would not hurt gaming. Gaming would shift around. Those developers would move the PC. They would go to Nintendo Switch because, because frankly, Nintendo is in a better position right now than the other console makers. They've been trying to stay away from the DEI stuff. I've seen... Uh, uh, some murmurings that they might be dipping their toe in it. They'd be smart not to. They'd be smart to steer clear. So, uh, uh, let's get to continue. You will never be charged for a new character because cool. that's the way it should be when you buy a game. Yes, that's the way it you should be. You will not be charged for maps, guns, 
additional quests, new bosses, and more. Yep. That nickel and diming shit is for the birds. Oh, 100%. Skin packs, and any sales there will go to supporting the character team. And allow I'm not against microtransactions. I am not against those. I'm not against a company you know, using microtransactions to try and have extra revenue. Final Fantasy XIV has microtransactions. Well, they're not so micro. They're, they're actually pretty high. But they are not pay to win. They're just glamour. Except for the um except for the items that allow you to skip levels. They have level skips. Well the thing is with Final Fantasy XIV, yeah, you can skip levels to get the higher level, but that only affects the character. It doesn't affect your gear. You have to still you know, grind you still have to grind tomes for that gear for that higher level gear to do those higher level raids and higher level end game content. And you still have to go through some of the higher um expansions in order to get there. You know, you it doesn't take you to the absolute end of the game, it takes you part of the way. And then you have to play the game in order to get the rest of the way there. And you also have to know how to play, you know, your character with all your skills unlocked. You can tell the difference between a veteran player who has played that class or that job from level one to level 100. You can tell who has gone through the whole gauntlet of playing the game and doing content all the way up to the highest level and someone who... Started a level one character, bought a skip, a story skip and, and and level skip, who bought that so they can get into end game, and doesn't perform the same. A tank or healer that doesn't perform the same because they don't understand how their skills how their skills work how their rotations work, they don't understand it. A veteran player will be able to outperform a person who skips, who uses a level, who uses a level leveling skip and, and well, there's there's two. There's one that bypasses the, the main scenario up to a certain point, and then the other one that bring that pushes your character up um to a to a certain level. I believe there's still two of those. But it there's those skips and you can tell the difference between someone who uses uses the skip and someone who doesn't you can tell the difference it is easily noticeable in their skill level and it's good that this is not going to have any of that bull crap in it now that's the only thing in 14 that is a little iffy but they put that in there in order to placate the the end the elitist end game crowd the rest of it is just all glamour and glamour and um previous event items like there is like swimsuits and stuff from previous um summer fairs and events so different different pieces of glamour that were given away to different um events little ladies day halloween things like that that they aren't offering anymore and so you can go in there and get it from the store if it, if it appears in the store then it's not going to be offered in game anymore. I think eventually at some point the car from the Final Fantasy 15 um yeah, this is Final Fantasy 50, the car from Final Fantasy 15 which you could get through the event through the crossover event will eventually show up in the store for you to buy. That's the mount, that's the mount where you know four people can ride in the car along with you. Anyway, let's, let's continue. Allowing us to make even more baller characters yeah. in the future. This design. Um, I had heard that these guys were heavily influenced by Phil Tippett's Mad God. And Mad God is an animated short that he worked on, I think, in 1990. Now, if you've heard the name Phil Tippett before, he is the VFX God who gave us the... Um, the Hoth battle in Empire Strikes Back. And he also worked in Return of the Jedi, uh, mostly the um, Endor 
surface battle uh, animations, the speeder bikes, and the um, ATSTs. He also worked on Jurassic Park. So he, he's that he's the master that gave us those really great effect sequences on Hoth and on Endor in uh, in the original trilogy, Star Wars. And he made a short, and this is heavily influenced by that. You can just now see its DNA. This? I finally remember a time growing up in the 90s when you could go to Comp USA and buy mm -hmm. a box copy of Command and Conquer, Giant Citizen Kabuto, or KKND for 50 bucks or less and be set yeah. for months. I'm really hoping we can get back there. Oh. Now for the roadmap. We really respect what the homies did with Ready or Not. Having the balls to release Never played that. into their map lineup was incredible. Hmm. So we're taking a page out of their book. We will give you one work in progress map early so you guys can scope it out have some fun and hopefully give the team some super helpful feedback that's definitely so nice even more kick ass when they drop fully taking it one step further we want the community to get a chance to vote on which bosses and which features we bring online first in our post launch plan nice anyone who bought the game will get access to an exclusive channel in our discord there you will be able to vote on what or who drops next the art team and our brothers at Evolve 512 broke our backs to make sure we planned months in advance to give you guys the post-apocalyptic road trip you deserve. <laughs> and if the game does well, shit. We want to bring this art style to entirely new environments in the future. Cool. It's going to be a wild ride. Now let's talk hosting. Regardless of how many people play, you will always be able to play with your friends locally and via peer-to-peer -peer hosting. We learned from the nightmares some of our industry colleagues have gone through this past year. So that means no infinite loop matchmaking bugs. And That's nice. Because uh, it, it's going to mention this in the video, but a lot of games have been brought offline. And so there's a lot of games you can't play anymore. And there's an initiative going on. It's in the EU right now to, to uh, stop killing games. And they're getting sick and they're they've gotten a lot of signatures and trying to get get it to where you know those companies can't kill off these games that people are still playing and so at some point developers stop putting in features like network play land local land play where you can have a bunch of friends together in your house connect via wi-fi or your or your um, home network, wire, wired home network, and just play with each other that way. Or, or, or as he said, with peer-to-peer -peer, uh, play, there's there's nothing wrong with peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer done right works really well. But doing that, and so that you don't have to have central servers in order to play, that's great, because that's been taken away from us by so many games that used to have it. Uh, Warcraft 3 used to have it. Starcraft used to have it. And I believe those were features that were removed from their um, remasters that were done. I know that Warcraft 3 lost it. You have to you have to connect to Battle.net in order to play with anyone. You have to connect to their servers. And Call of Duty and Battlefield are that way. You cannot connect to any other servers other than theirs. And if they decide to shut down the servers, then you're shit out of luck. Um, Star Wars Battlefront 2. If EA decides to shut the servers down on that game, you can't play it anymore. You might be able to play the single player campaign, or you might not. But you won't be able to log in anymore. You won't be able to view any of your characters that you've unlocked or anything. All that's gone. But with this, if something happened to the company or, you know, there's not a huge enough player population, let's say down the line, there's not a huge enough player population to justify keeping the servers up. If something happens and the servers aren't there, you can still play. And a lot of games, most, about 90% of games today don't let you do that. And it is nice that they are actually letting you play 
this game, if something happens and they are not there, you can still play this game with your friends. You can even play it solo. There's, even, there's a solo mode. It's more like Elite Dangerous then, in a way. Because Elite Dangerous is peer-to-peer. -peer, and it doesn't, doesn't fully rely upon... Uh, it doesn't completely fully rely upon central servers. Although, it, technically it does. It's sort of a hybrid. But you can play solo without other people. You can play in general, multiplayer. Or you can play in a private group. Um, and it's... And it connects peer to peer with people, which is why um, it breaks down when there's too many people in an, in an area. But as I said, peer to peer done right works really well. And no flooded servers where you can't jump into what you just. Yeah, bought. we did this so that no matter what happens, when you buy our game, yep. you can jump in and rock and roll. Cool. Even if it's solo. Yep, that's what I said. If you want to reach out to the dev team. Hit up the Discord. There's a ton of homies in there that love but that brings just Attack on Titan weird. vibes. Now on a more somber note, these past few months, we lost Spec Ops the Line, mm -hmm. Project Boundary, mm -hmm. and now they are shutting down the Battlefield 3 servers. Yep. Just like I said. Is, in the never ending quest for profit, mm -hmm. they are closing the gate on some really special games that inspired us. Games cost more now to develop than they ever have. And that means risk mitigation is priority one, two. A ridiculous amount of money. Uh, I think Concord cost Sony about two, an estimated $250 million. It's a $250 million investment gone in a week. As I said, I stand by what I said. I stand by what I said about the crash. Um, I call it a crash, but it's more a paradigm shift. The old guard's falling away. It's going to take a while for them to go down, because they still have a lot of residual cash. They still have a lot of income. But they can't sustain this. What's going on with them cannot be sustained. They're going to eventually collapse. And I want to be here when that happens. I'm going to watch it happen. I'm going to grab my popcorn and I'm going to watch as the news reports come in of Activision and EA and Ubisoft going into full bankruptcy. Maybe not completely going away, probably downsize a lot and become less relevant you know, with other studios taking up their place. But I'm... Yo, I, I, I don't like it when people lose their jobs. I'm not celebrating that people will lose their jobs, but because of all this, but the way these companies have acted, the way they have treated consumers, the way they have acted, they deserve it. They deserve what's happening to them. And it's sad that the people who work at those companies who can't make any decisions who just basically are just following orders will lose their jobs because of it. And I know uh, uh, there's probably going to be a lot of people laid off because of the failure of um, of uh, Concord. I fully expect news of layoffs at the developer that uh, I think was Firewalk that made Concord. I fully expect that there's going to be mass layoffs very soon. Sony apparently is not learning any lesson. They're they're pushing with something called fair games. I mean, it's obvious from the name where they're coming from with that, and some other some other thing. They're still still trying to chase that that uh, live service pipe dream, but they're not doing it right. Still trying to chase it. And three. And remember, it's not their fault. They're a product of their environment. Yeah. And that's why this year has been so inspiring to see other crews breaking out of that muck to bring the magic. Mm -hmm. One ammo belt at a time. You know, even though the game has had some issues, um, Stormgate is one of those devs 
you know, they, 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 they're, they, they're, they're, they're former Blizzard people who worked on Star, work on StarCraft and Warcraft. They, uh, they've had a rough time. Um, but I think they will eventually find their footing. They're in early access. I think the game's, um, mixed on Steam. But I think they will eventually find their footing. And there uh, is another developer who's working on a game called Beautiful Light that is very much like this one. Uh, Post-apocalyptic sort of extraction shooter sort of game. It's a little bit different uh, where some of the players actually play some of the monsters. Uh, but uh, it's very similar to this. And they have a very similar, just open, transparent approach to these guys have. And, you know, this... This game is very dark and negative and uh you know it's kind of got got that dark oppressive vibe it's a it's a it's a horror uh, extraction shooter but the positivity coming from the developers you can feel it in this trailer you when you look at this you're seeing these dark depressing visuals but the vibe you're getting is extremely positive, and th that's why I'm that's why I'm going to invest in this game. I'm going to uh, going to get the early access game and try this, and I may even put some uh, videos out on it. Lastly, words cannot express how much we appreciate your support. Mm. People from all well, I'm talking about and all ages have reached out just to say thanks for going there and handling the subject with the care. And energy it deserves this means we're not alone in hoping we see a new kill zone a gritty battlefield mm. maybe a new command and conquer title that's not a bloody mobile game but if the well, response to what we're building is any one energy, can hope maybe they will find the guts to bring those games back the right way and in the meantime we'll see you guys <sighs> in the wasteland on september 24th 2024 cheers well you know, um, it's something that to hope for, for those, I wouldn't hold my breath. I really wouldn't. But, um, yeah, this is, you feel the positivity from these guys. And I think they're actually going to go places and if they can make their game good. And, and, and so far... The response from their community is really positive. They're doing the right thing. And their stance on microtransactions and not nickeling and diming their players and generally treating gamers with respect. You know, this is the direction the industry is headed. It's a little slow now. It's a little slow now, but these guys, these guys are the future of the gaming industry. The triple A's, they are the past and they are falling away. This old guard companies that are just, just too big, too set in their ways to change. They're fading away. These guys represent the future of the gaming industry. They are what the gaming industry is going to become, you know, in just a few short years i don't expect ea and activision and ubisoft and all them to go away overnight it's going to be a slow death the crash happened right the original crash happened relatively quickly this one's going to be a little slow this one's going to happen over time we're going to start seeing more companies like this we're going to start seeing more developers like this coming forward being way more open respecting gamers having a better stance on microtransactions as i said i'm not against microtransactions in games even if it's a paid game as long as it's done right and it's not pay to win garbage because you know they're a company and they need to you know pay the bills they need to make money make make profit that's what a company does but 
there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it and these guys are doing it the right way and if they that they do it right and they stick by they stick by this um by how they're doing their business models they stick to this business model they could become another war another warframe they could become another big popular franchise no, um, beloved by gamers. Warframe is just beloved by the community because of how they treat them. They treat them with respect. And so these guys are treating gamers with respect. And you treat them with respect, the gamers will, the gamers will come. You build, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> Basically. And, uh, yeah, I really like what I'm seeing, and I'm definitely going to be um, delving into this game. Now, I'm normally not big into horror games and things like that. I haven't played too many extraction shooters. Hard actually, hardly any extraction shooters, really, but I'm definitely going to give this one a try and might even, might even stream it, maybe. But uh, I'm going to keep my eye on this project. And um, and if there's any new major developments, you'll see me talk about it. Anyway, I've been Mike DeZorch. Thanks for watching. Uh, got another video coming soon. A product review. One of my first... I've done a product review before, but this is going to be for a more professional product review. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.